Let's uh, go walk around that compound, see some taggers, hopefully some peats and some squeaks. All right. Choo-choo. 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 Choo-choo-choo. Choo-choo. Hi. Hello. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Why have you gotten to be so cute? Oh, my gosh. Ezra, Ezra, chew. Ezra, chew. Ezzy, chew. My goodness. All of our goodness. Ooh. Oh, my. Ugh. Ugh. There you have it. There you have it. I mean, it's just the Dorbs. The Dorbs is out there. The truth. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, got done doing some of that there. Butchering. I was just helping to. Yuck. That's pretty much the grossest soup ever. No, I would not like a bowl. Gross. Gross. Yuck. <laughs> oh, also, and uh, some people were talking, I, I don't remember if it was... Uh, hi. I think it was an Instagram post. And, sometimes, and people were sitting there saying like, oh my gosh. Uh... You know, Derek was saying nice things about Tigis, but it was in a post about Diwali. And it's like, just because you were a tiger doesn't mean that you were a Tigi. That, that moniker is very specific to Boomer and Slade. Yes. They have to, they have to be identified. It's very important that we know their whereabouts at all times. Ooh. What are you looking at? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, ugh, what am I doing? Ah, I'm talking to you. See, that's the the beguiling ways of Tigis. They lure you in with promises of dorbs, and then you get close, and then you're like, "This is just a burlap sack full of turds." This isn't adorable at all. Bim bim. Bim bim. I mean, ugh, yuck. Who said that you could come up over here and say hi? Huh? Who said that? Who said that? No. <laughs> Mr. Man. <laughs> Yep, see, this is, it's like, it, it baffles me. It, it's, it's really baffling. It's one of the more interesting kind of uh, sociologic conundrums. Like inside the mind of a Team Tigi person. It just, it's very strange. It's very strange. I don't quite get it. But, alas, I guess to each, it's a free country to each their own. I mean, look. You want to put that poison inside of you? That's that's your business. Chew. Chew, chew. What are you doing in those bushes? Chew. Chew, chew. Achoo, chew, chew. Achoo, chew, chew. chew, chew.
Oh, da, 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 da. That is Alley over there. And then Archie is over here. Oh, hello, all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, again. Welcome to another super duper fantastic episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Yep. I did finally go and get my arm looked at. I. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the dude that saw me, uh, said, like, yeah, you need an MRI, bud. We gotta see, uh, the extent of what you done did. And whether or not it's gonna have to, whether or not, you know, just regular old rehab can kind of fix you right up, or... If you're going to need to have some surgical correction, either way, you, uh, not knowing is not a good thing. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. So I am going to be doing one of those MRI things sooner rather than later because... As far as tendons are concerned, there's like a, there's a short window of time in which basically it becomes more and more difficult to reattach them to the places that they kind of snapped off of. And then eventually it'll become impossible. Don't want that. Don't want that. I do want to be able to have access to that to that musculature you know for a number of years more uh, I don't want to have a I don't want to have a significantly reduced amount of strength in my left arm for the rest of my life that would uh, that would not be fun I kind of need I kind of need my strength kind of sort of need it Hi. Hi. Ooh. Hi, princess. Hi, princess. Mm. Yep. Heidi posted, uh, relative to when this was filmed, of course. I mean, this is going to be the Thursday cast, so a number of days have passed since certain updates were made. We can talk about Alucia for a little bit. Heidi posted uh, an update about Alucia. It was very, very nice. Very, just very, just simple matter of fact. Um, heartfelt. And uh, just open. And um, she, uh, if you want to go see it, you can check out, of course, like, Kara's Facebook and Heidi's Facebook, uh, Heidi Berry Cron on Instagram. Hi, bud. Hi, Vavol. And whenever she, she'll write something and then she asks me to proofread it uh, just for structure, flow, grammar. I believe that's how that's pronounced. I'm not, I'm not like an English major, but. English was always, you know, one of my stronger, one of my stronger suits. So, that kind of helped to, I helped to edit and put those thoughts into, into order. Hi. Hi, Mike. <laughs> um, and... I haven't, you know, like, I've known that Alucia has had leukemia for, a, you know, a good, a good little bit, and, uh, it's been, it's kind of been a little bit more par for the course, like, yep, you know, another one of our babies, and it just is what it is, and it sucks, but you just gotta keep on kind of doing your thing, and it just hadn't, hadn't really hit me until I started reading, uh, Heidi's thing, helping to proofread this stuff, and it, I don't know, it, it really kind of started to started to affect me 
Um, yeah. <laughs> and then it seemed like um, it seemed like this one was kind of affecting me even a little bit more than uh, other ones in recent memory have done. And I knew why. And it's not because I've like I've had like a particularly close relationship with the Lucci. I, and like I love her very much so. But um, her and I haven't had. Oh gosh, there was a stinking spider. There's a stinking spider on your butt. Was it biting your butt? I think it was two spiders mating. Oh my gosh, because there's one over there and then there's one down there. Ay ay ay. It is a little fuzzy spider, so they're not like they're not harmful. It's probably like a bee sting or something like that. If anything, those little stinking spiders having relations, having fornications, having violent fornications on your butt. My goodness. But yeah, it's, there's there's different cats that I I have a, a much closer relationship. With which I have a much closer relationship. You know, like Firebug, like I love, I love fire. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'm more like closely linked to Nadal and Diwali. I, I feel more attached to them. I feel like I have much more like interaction back and forth, you know? I guess the same could be said about. Lucia, love her. Have had great interactions with her. You know. But I was reading through the thing last night, and I had to kind of at the. I got to the end. I had to kind of take a moment, and I just kind of was sitting in the chair, and I just was feeling the emotions kind of well up inside of me, because it was one of those kind of things where okay, now it's like there's. There's a quiet moment where we're not having to run, run, run. There's a quiet moment. And now, like, the actual process or processing kind of thing can start to be done. It can, we, I can start to actually process what is happening. Um, and, of course, you know, you try to... Like, and I don't... I. You know, people want to sit there and say, like, oh, well, you know, you just got to let it out and everything. But I've actually kind of become a lot more reserved and I try to be more stoic about these types of things. Not because I think that, you know, like, oh, I don't want people to, but I just think that it's, it's, I don't know, it's better to, for me, it's kind of better just to, I'm not saying not feel, but not make a display of it. That's the more important thing. Yes, feel, but... Try to keep it more to yourself, for the most part. It does no, it doesn't do any good to other people in a lot of ways, you know. For if you start kind of being all blubbery, you know. But Heidi was in the office and she was sitting on the couch and I was sitting at the desk uh, in the office and. I had to take a little bit of a moment at the desk, and then I, I, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, these boys. And I got up, and I sat down on the couch, and it, I was, again, like I said, I was having, I just didn't want to, didn't want to make a big kind of like, you know, mushy, expressive kind of thing, but I sat down, and I was just kind of quiet, and uh, she could, she could tell. And then she reached out and she grabbed my hand, you know, um, and yeah, that's when, uh, and then I, again, still, still keeping things like on the rails, but it's when I, I started to have a little bit more in the way of just kind of tears and just, I tried to start kind of talking, well I did, and I'm like, this one's a little bit. You know, this one's this one's a little bit different, and I was about to finish the thought, but then Heidi finished it for me, and she said exactly what I was thinking. And she said, it's because this is your first baby. She 
She says, this is your first baby. And then I said, yeah, that's it. Now what I mean by that is a first, first animal that you knew and helped to interact and raise and whatnot when they were a baby and then they lived a life and now they're dying and it's different it's different when I first came to this facility when I first started working here uh, JP Jake Luca and Alucia they were just about six months old and they were little and I was able to uh, gain experience and I was able to you know spend time with them and interact with them because when I first started coming out to care I just I became pretty well immediately uh, hooked and I started to become a regular I became a regular volunteer immediately so I just was I was I was here all the time and I got to be around them when they were babies so like in essence they were they got to and like whoever whoever got to be around like they'll always be yes like all the animals are your babies but when they're actual babies like little babies like it kind of drives the point home even more like they're really they're babies like baby babies you know and Yes, lost two others uh, who were who were babies, you know, Mawali and Jelani. So it's not to sit there and say that I don't already have uh, like a very fundamental understanding of what it is like to lose an animal uh, that was quote one of one of your babies in the more kind of literal sense of the of the of the term you know but this is this is different because Lucia has i mean she's 14 she's old she's not old old but she's old enough and Getting to the point where it's like, yeah, okay. Could she have could she have more time? I yeah, absolutely. I've seen plenty of cats live uh, well past fourteen, but I mean, is it crazy to think that she would get cancer? You know, as a as a middle aged cat or an older cat, I should say. Absolutely not. Yeah, past middle age, I would say. So. That's when things kind of become a little bit, yeah, they become a little bit different. Because now it's like compounding the, uh, the effects of time. And I guess your own notions, uh, your own existential kind of notions, you know? And then you sit there and you think about the times that you've had and all of the things and all the memories and all the stuff. And, um, when I first came to the facility, when I first came to the facility, Heidi had already been working with cats, uh, for, uh, about like 16, 17 years raising cats. So by the time, like I showed up, she already basically like understood like all of these different kind of timeline type things. She's lived it. She's felt it. And you start to think about, you start to think about your, you start to think about your experience, uh, not just in months, not just in years, but now you start to think about your experience in terms of lifetimes. And that kind of, it's, it's, that's strange, you know, 
it's it's just kind of it's a bizarre it's surreal and it's it's one of those kind of things it's it is kind of it's yeah processing that and then what that means I can just It just becomes different, you know? It just becomes different. And I didn't have to say anything, and Heidi knew. And she knew. Because she's been there, you know? Hmm. But even so, it's like, you take the time, you feel the feel. You say your snuffles, you say I love you. And then, you know, as of right now, it's just like, hey, look, just let us know when you're ready. That's kind of where we're at right now. Maybe by the time that, and I know I said this last time, but maybe, but maybe by the time this gets posted, she'll already be gone. Who knows? I don't know. Right now, it's just, we're waiting for her to let us know. That's it. We are waiting for Alucia to tell us when she's ready. For now, she's she still eats. She still snuffles. I know that she's in pain. Not like, a, you know, I know she's aching. But when the pain gets to be, when the threshold where it's like obviously comfort and quality have kind of tipped the balances, then we'll know. You know? Bah! Kick that, kick that! Hi. Oh yeah. Hello. Hello. How are you? Look at these little guys. Strange little things. Anywho. That's all I got. That's all I got. Thanks for watching this episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. Hashtag Dorbus Ward in the comments section below. Like and subscribe for all of your big cat goodness. If you want to learn more about this facility, you can always check out our website, carerescuetexas.com, for more information. And uh, we'll keep you posted. We'll keep you posted about Alucia, and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.